Week 6 of the 2012 legislative session proved to be a pivotal one. On Monday, as the debate and final vote loomed on the prison privatization scheme, the Florida State Conference of the NAACP sponsored a press conference with the organization's chairman of Criminal and Juvenile Justice Committee, Dale Landry. Landry explained how rehabilitation programs that exist in private prisons are not as comprehensive as those that currently exist, and that it is imperative that every attempt is made to turn current inmates into productive members of society post-release. Private prisons would not and could not offer the proper rehabilitation services that currently exist in the Florida correctional system. Later in the day, a critical amendment offered by Senator Mike Fasano that would have all but stopped the prison privatization plan for this year failed on a 21 to 19 vote, leading to serious doubts about our coalition's effort to stop the deal and the outcome of the final vote on the following day. The next day was Valentine's Day, and activists with the Floridians for Fair Economy Coalition delivered a giant Valentine card to House Speaker Dean Cannon and Senate President Mike Herodopoulos, urging them to support the Fair Economy Act, which would provide up to $500 million in additional revenue by ensuring that multi-state corporations pay their fair share. Their message for leadership was to open their hearts for Floridians and to put these vital revenue-generating bills on the fast track towards becoming law. Later on Tuesday, prior to the final privatization vote on the Senate floor, Senator Maria Sachs joined with representatives of labor and community in denouncing SB 2038. Senator Sachs has been a champion on this issue and wanted to show her commitment to working families by standing with them before heading onto the Senate floor in the hopes to kill SB 2038. Are we a government that is composed of for-profit corporations? That we will sell our prisons to the highest bidder for companies that make money from it? Or are we a government that's composed of people? People who work in our communities? People who, who the 1,000 nurses that work within our prison system? The communities that have housed uh, the most severe criminals in our state? Are we a government that's composed of over the 4,000 correctional officers and their families and schools and the communities that they live in? Today we will find out what kind of a people we are, and I stand here today. Then all eyes in Tallahassee turned to the Senate floor to witness the culmination of what could be the biggest legislative battle of the year. The opposition to Senate Bill 2038 crossed political lines with both Republicans and Democrats voicing their concern about the bill. The debate was heated as the side in favor of privatization continued to blame the courts for rejecting it last year when it was stuck in the budget. However, the critiques of this bill came from a diverse group of senators, each one with their own strongly worded reason for voting this down. But you know what? There are human beings involved in this. Human beings. There are families involved. There are communities involved. We hear Senator Alexander talk about these individuals will be able to find jobs other parts of the Department of Corrections, not when you're closing down all these prisons in other parts of the state, because you're going to have those men and women that will be looking for a job as well. So let's not play those games. That's not going to happen. People are going to be without a job. Veterans are going to be without a job. Men and women who have families, mortgages to pay, and to suggest that they can go move somewhere else, well, guess what? Their homes are upside down. They owe more on the mortgage than they can sell the house for. So where are they going to go? SB 2038 died on the Senate floor with a vote 19 to 21. Despite having a massive lobbying presence and spending untold amount of money on politicians, the deal to take over our prisons was denied. This goes to show that when people become educated and outraged on an overreach of corporate power in our democratic process, those politicians will listen. Thanks to all of your hard work and dedication, the public became notified about this and responded with phone calls, testimonies, and letters to their senators telling them to stand against this bill. On Thursday, the effort to slash the state's minimum wage for all tipped employees in the state was heard in the Senate Commerce and Tourism Committee. Some of the state's most profitable mega chains like Outback Steakhouse want to roll back the constitutionally guaranteed minimum wage to maximize their own profits. Tipped workers have three times the poverty rate uh, as, as any other job sector in the country. Now, when we hear that this proposal could guarantee 130% of the minimum wage rate, that, that excites us a little bit, and maybe this is a way to, to crack at that poverty problem. But what we have found, and we ran a lot of different projections, very similar to the chart that, that you had in front of you, but what we found at the end of the day 
was you were still looking at a, a $2.52 reduction in their base rate. This measure passed the committee, but Republicans like Senator Lynn and Dockery raised serious concerns about taking this bill all the way to the Senate floor this session. A huge week, but the fight continues next week with pensions and the floor retirement system in the crosshairs yet again. We'll bring you all the details next week in our video legislative update. Solidarity.